If you're looking for a handheld red light therapy device that packs a powerful punch, then the Chroma Iron Forge device may be just what you need. Marketed as having the power output of a regular red light therapy panel, but compressed into the size of a brick, this device has definitely got some people talking. So what's the deal? How powerful is it really? What's it like using this device? And after a week or two of using this myself, what are my thoughts? Let's find out. Okay, so first up, what do you need to know about this product? Now, as you can see, it is handheld. It is about the size of a brick. It's also quite loud. Now, I know it looks rather cool with the light going because of this fan. I'm actually gonna turn it off. So this is the second edition of the Chroma Ironforge. The product itself is called Ironforge. It's from a company called Chroma. I've actually interviewed the founder and inventor of this product, Michael Chaperio. I will link to that below if you want to check that interview out. It is a good interview. Now, as you can tell, it is very different to your regular red light therapy panel or red light therapy LED device. I mean, just looking at the design, looking at the chips, looking at the cables, all of it, it's, it's completely new. It's completely unique, which I love, I love about it. The other thing that really excites me about this product is its power. Now, Michael's the first to say this thing is powerful. It's designed that way. It means you can get good penetration into the joints, into the tissue. And it also means from a treatment point of view, your session times are gonna be much shorter. So though this may appear to be more of a targeted device, you could actually still treat the entire body. You're just having to move it around. Now, speaking of moving around, that's exactly what Chroma say you should do with this product. Why? Well, because this thing is very powerful and there is a risk of burns. If you were to leave it, say, on your arm for five or 10 minutes, you're gonna get some serious thermal buildup, which will lead to some burns. There is a document that comes with the device saying, hey, look, you have to be careful of this. Make sure you're moving it around the body uh, and don't leave it in one place. However, if you've got half a brain, you'll soon realize that after, say, 30 seconds or even less in some areas, you'll start feeling heat, you'll start feeling warmth, and it will feel uncomfortable. So you're gonna naturally want to move it around anyway. The recommended way to use this is to actually use it like a brush, slowly moving it across the body, and you can do that multiple times. This way you're getting the light into the tissue without thermal buildup. So of course you could do this across the whole body. Some strokes on the arm, do the chest, around the head, the back, you're still going to be able to treat the full body in a 10, 15 minute session, for instance, maybe even less. Now, this isn't designed for surface level skin issues. This is very different to say a low powered LED mask. This is designed for penetration. It's designed to get deep into the joints, into the tissue, into the muscle. And there's two reasons why it's so good at doing this. Firstly, it's using a lot of near infrared LEDs. Out of the 150 odd LED chips that are packed into this tiny device, 80% of them are emitting 850 nanometer near infrared light. The remaining 20% is emitting your 670 red light. So that's a lot of deep penetrating near infrared light in a small area. But it's not just the wavelength selection that makes it great for deep penetration. It's also the irradiance. The power output from this is really, really high. Now I'm going to look at the exact numbers with my spectrometer soon. So be sure to hang around for that. So if you're someone who's got, say, a really sore knee or arthritis in the joints, or wants to tap into the deep tissue benefits that photobiomodulation brings, this is something that you should definitely consider. Now, yes, it is a handheld targeted device, but as you'll notice, it is on a cord. It's not battery powered, and that's because of the high power output that it's emitting. The product itself also comes with this neat carry case. It's a heavy duty, well secured case, so it does mean you can travel well with this. And in fact, I actually think it would quite appeal to people who do wanna travel. As for the size itself, it is similar to say a small brick. It's three and a half inches across, three and a half inches deep, and about six inches long. Weight wise, it comes in under two pounds. Okay, so now let's fire up the spectrometer. I'm gonna see exactly what wavelengths are being emitted and also test their radiance figures. Hey, real quick before I do that, can you please hit the like button below if you're enjoying this? And also while you're down there, hit subscribe. I do really appreciate the support you guys give me. More subscribers, more likes helps grow the channel and helps me get the credibility to reach out to other companies, other experts, other scientists, and get them on the show as well. All of this means more resources, more products, more information can be shared with you guys and we all benefit from it. Okay, so first up, I just did a snapshot reading of the wavelengths here. So you can see the two peaks. You've got your red light peaking at 675 nanometers. Um, power's coming in around 6. 50, remember this is quite a high powered device. So you're still getting a ton of light, even down here, uh, 640, say through to 690. So there, there's a ton of light coming in in the red here, peaking at that 675. When we look at the near infrared, 
the peak is 850-ish, 8.53. Again, though, if we say you're getting plenty of light down here, which you are, 800 all the way through to 871. So it's quite a wide band uh, of therapeutic red and near-infrared light that you're getting. Let me just move around the device and take a few other readings to see if it looks any different. Now, so pretty much every reading looked just like this. Now, what that means is you're actually getting good light coverage across the face of the device. It means you're not getting any concentrated spots of lots of red and no near infrared or vice versa. It's actually one thing I noticed when I was testing the power readings, which I'll get to soon. You're getting a good light spread. You're getting good coverage and it's, it's really, really good. That's what you want in a device. Now, for those of you who have watched a lot of my reviews in the past, you may be looking at this number over here. And yes, this number is really, really high. This is your power density or your power irradiance figure. And as you can see, that, that figure is huge. So let me talk about these power figures now. So what I did is I actually tested at six inches and one inch. Now, pretty much when I'm testing panels, I'm always testing at six inches. These are the figures that go into the light therapy inside is shopping tool. So you can make comparisons and everything like that. It just makes things easier. It's become like a bit of a standard for me. I'm not saying you should use these products at six inches. It's just that for reference point of view, six inches is a good number to use. Now, realistically, you're probably not going to use it six inches away from the body. You're going to use it a lot closer. Well, at least I did anyway. But still, the peak figure I got at six inches was 158 milliwatts over centimeter squared. This number is really, really high, like higher than any red light therapy panel I've tested. Again, though, that's at six inches. When I came into one inch off the LEDs, which is quite close, uh, but you may even go closer if you are pressing it against the skin, I got a figure of over 500 milliwatts over centimeter squared. Like I said, there is a heap of power coming from this. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, it's quite impressive to see, to be honest. Now, I also did an average across nine points, a little bit hard to do on such a small device, but that average came out to be 148. Now, what you'll notice is that's quite close to the peak. And again, that means you're getting really nice light coverage across the face of this device. Now, I also crunched the total wattage output. Given the size of this device, it's not that reliable, but I did get a six inch figure of 10 and a half watts and a figure at the one inch mark of 36 watts. So what does this all mean? Well, simple. You're getting a heap of energy from a very small concentrated device, and it's coming in at wavelengths that are well documented to help improve things like inflammation, cell growth, ATP synthesis, all that good stuff that I've talked about in other videos around red light therapy. Now, I actually wanna do a fun little experiment here and see if there is light coming through my hand. I have done light penetration experiments in the past. Uh, I'll put links to those videos below you if you wanna check them out. But what I'm gonna do here is put my hand over the face of the Ironforged device. I'm gonna put the spectrometer right up against the back of my hand. I'm gonna see if it detects any light. Of course, there's gonna be a bit of light leakage in the room, but if I push that sensor hard up against the skin, hopefully it's not detecting that environmental light. Remember, this is tested with the light on one side and the sensor on the other side. My hand's, what, an inch thick? There's bone and all sorts of good stuff in there. Now, if we look at the screen, it's actually picking up on near infrared with a teeny bit of red light. What's interesting is the power number here is, is rather low compared to what we were getting, you know, without the hand in way. But it is showing that, yeah, there is still light getting all the way through the hand there. What is also interesting is that most of the light energy is in the near infrared and there's very little red light. That is because we know near infrared light penetrates rather well. It penetrates deep into the, t into the tissue, which is why, again, it's why it's used in this device. So that's really cool. What that means is if I'm treating my hand, pretty much my entire hand is going to be saturated with near infrared and even some red light photons, which is which is really, really cool. Of course, if I had, say, arthritis in the hand, uh, it's good to know, but you could even treat it from both sides anyway. So yeah, you're getting great penetration there. All right, so what about EMF and sound? Well, there was no electric field readings on this, which is great. There was a little bit of magnetic field at six inches. Uh, it wasn't too high. It was just in the orange category at about 0.23 micro teslas, so quite minuscule. Obviously though, the closer you get to the device, the higher those readings are. And this is a device that you're probably gonna be using closer to the source. Now, one thing I should have shown you earlier, the device is actually split into two. You've got the LEDs, the heat sink, and the fan. That's all that this part is. Then you have the actual driver, the power supply, I guess I'm not too sure what you call it. That's found about a meter or two 
uh, away from the LED device. So this particular unit here may actually be putting out a lot more EMFs, but of course this is not close to the body. This is actually, this part's actually close to the wall because you've only got about a foot or so of cord uh, before you've got the wall plug. Whereas here you've got, I don't know, maybe three or four feet. Now from a sound point of view, this thing isn't the quietest. I was detecting about 71 decibels when the thing's running and that is because of the large fans here. Those big fans are in place because this thing is putting out a ton of heat, hence the large heat sink as well. So again, so this is very different to say your regular silicon matte LED device that uh, doesn't have any heat sinks or fans, right? This is, this is pretty heavy duty, but that does come with a cost and that cost is a lot of noise. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, yes, it is loud and it's not the most enjoyable sound, uh, but you kind of know, all right, this thing packs a punch. We're going to do a few minutes treatment and you move on. It's not really a device that you're going to be using, say, like a wall panel where you're sitting there and doing breath work or meditation and you want that quiet sort of hum. I don't see people using the Iron Forge in that sort of manner. It's more like, hey, I've got a bung shoulder. Let's smash it out. Let's do a few minutes. Or, hey, I'm about to hit the gym. You know, let's do a few minutes while I'm warming up. Or, hey, I've got really sore arthritis. This thing's gonna work and I can use it quickly. I don't care about the sound. So still 71 decibels, it's up there. Okay, so how much does all of this cost? Well, it retails for 999 US dollars. I have been given a discount code. That discount code is Alex. And if you enter that in at checkout, it will bring the price down to $920. Now shipping to the States is free and international shipping isn't too bad as well. Expect to pay about $30 to get it shipped to your door. Now that we have the power and the price figures, I can do some value calculations. It worked out to be about $86 per watt of therapeutic red light. That's with a six inch reading. If you take a one inch reading, it comes down to about $25. Now, of course the 86 is really high. If you head over to the light therapy inside a shopping tool, you can sort all the products on there by value to see which one is giving you the best bang for the buck. And yeah, anything under say 10 is really, really good. Teens is about average, 20s is starting to get up there. So $25, it does make it a little bit more expensive. But remember, this isn't a typical red light therapy panel. It is it's very different. It is It serves a particular place. If you want high power in a targeted small area, I mean, this is something you should definitely consider, even though it is going to come in at a higher price point. What about stands and accessories? Well, there's no stands available unless you want to make your own. And I know some people have done that. It does come with that carry case, which is kind of neat. Also, it comes with a one year warranty and a 30 day return period. OK, so now wrapping all of this up, what do I like about it and what do I not like about the Iron Forge? Let's look at the pros first. Well, the big one is the power. I mean, this thing's ludicrous. I mean, it's a very, very powerful. 500 milliwatts over centimeter squared at about at an inch. And it's, it's, it's unheard of from an LED device, a, a consumer grade LED device, especially given its size. I mean, there are some very small, say, torches that are putting out some good numbers, not necessarily this high, but you know, some high numbers. But this is, this is a large device in the scheme of a, a targeted device. You can treat a large area with this. Uh, and if you're looking at it from a dosing point of view, you only need say 30 seconds in an area to get a ton of energy to get your, your joule numbers up. And of course, with that power comes the penetration. If you're suffering from deep tissue joint problems or deep tissue injuries or tendon issues, all that sort of stuff, connective tissue issues, this is gonna be great. I mean, I'm looking forward to using this when I'm in the gym and I've got say a, t a bung knee or I sprain my ankle or you know I tear a muscle or something. I'm, I'm, I'll definitely be using this. It also opens up a whole nother world around say brain health and cognitive function. Saying that if you've seen my interview with Dr. Randy Beck, you know, be careful before you're using something like this on the brain if you do have some underlying brain issues. And then finally, with all that extra power, you get shorter treatment times. Instead of spending say 15, 20 minutes by panel, you can hit your joint in maybe a minute or two. I know this opens up a whole nother world around dosing. And I know it's a conversation that I've had with a lot of people and even on this channel myself. Uh, whether more power is better and whether there are potential issues around dosing. I know I've seen some animal research looking at different power intensities where they adjust the time and keep the dose, the amount of light the same and the results are different. So that topic is still something to keep in mind when you are looking at these higher power devices. Now I've actually spoken to Michael about this. He's got his thoughts. Check out that interview to see what he says about it. But it is again, something to keep in mind. I suppose though, and this is the argument he makes, if you're trying to get a heap of light, a heap of energy in deep into a, a joint, yeah, you may be overloading the skin, but in terms of that joint, which is the main priority, you're gonna need that extra power. You're gonna need it from a penetration point of view and a dosing point of view. So 
Lots of ways to think about it. Just something to keep in mind, right? All right, what else do I like about it? I actually like how it's built. I mean, it looks quite industrial, almost like prototype-ish, but it's not. It's it's actually well put together. Uh, it's nice to hold. It feels stol- solid and sturdy. It, it looked, it, it's safe, it's secure. Everything's done with good materials. Uh, if you look at Michael's background and what he does with his other products, like he knows a thing or two about engineering and product design and he makes sure he's using good quality parts. And I suppose that's reflected in the price as well. So yeah, I do like that about it. Uh, it is nice and easy to hold. Uh, it's been designed where you can grip it and move it around. The problem is though, if you uh, say you have really small hands, you may find it a little bit too small to use. You'll probably end up holding the fans instead of the heat sink. Not that it's a problem, but just something I thought I'd mention. I also like the light coverage here. Okay, there are a lot of LEDs packed into here. It's not just four or six LEDs that we typically see in a handheld, you know, portable battery device. There's 150 odd LED chips in there. I mean, there's a lot. And so you're getting great penetration like we've already talked about, but also great light coverage. And I saw that in the test as well. So you're getting a nice blend of light. And finally, I actually think it's quite a good travel device. Now I'm about to go away for a week. I'm actually gonna take this with me. The thing is it doesn't take up too much space. And yet I know I can hit my whole body in a couple of minutes, just slowly moving it across the body, hitting my feet, my legs, my neck, all of those areas. And I'm gonna get a red light therapy dose that I'd get, say, by standing in front of my Biomax 900 panels. Of course, it's still reasonably heavy and you need a cord, so it's not the perfect travel device, but still, it's something that I think a lot of people will like for travel. Likewise, for say, athletic performance or athletic injury, if, if you've got a niggling injury and you're heading off to say a bike race, you can take this in your gym bag, use it in your warm-up session, use it afterwards, use it in between races if it's a multi-race day, for instance, use it in the gym. There's lots of ways you can use this and it actually excites me. I think I'll have this hanging around in the gym, uh, maybe even test it in between interval sessions, in between sets. I mean, you just leave it plugged in. You only need a few seconds on the on the target area, on the muscle, away you go. So definitely some benefits there. All right, so what about the downsides? Well, there are a couple here. Firstly, there's no timer in here. I thought it would be cool to have a little timer in here so when you're treating a particular area, you can see how long it's been, especially because there is a ton of power coming out of this. Or maybe a little beep timer where you just press a button, you, you set the beep intervals to say 10 or 15 or 30 seconds. And so you can just press that button, you do a particular treatment area. When it beeps, you move to another one. Just a nice to have. It's not a deal breaker, but after using this a few times, it's something that I've been like, ah, oh, that would be cool to have. Now, I really wish the on-off button was closer to the unit itself. At the moment, it's only a foot away from the power plug going into the wall. So that means you can plug this in, do your session standing up. You want to turn it off. You've got to go all the way over to the wall and turn it off there. I mean, effectively, you may as well switch it off at the wall. Another thing is it's a little bit tricky to use on hard to reach places, say the back of your shoulder or the mid back. Uh, you've got to reach around and hopefully get the right spot. Of course, if you've got a partner or someone, you, you can get them to do it. But when I have been using it, say yesterday, for instance, I was using it in the gym, I was doing a heavy back workout and I really wanted to hit the lats. I mean, sure, I can reach around like so, but it's a bit tricky trying to get the meat of the back so to speak i suppose i could sit it on a table and just move up and down and that's probably a better way to do it but it's just again something i thought i'd mention some people aren't going to like the sound it is quite loud also the fact that it only comes with a one-year warranty and a 30-day return period that is on the lower side for red light therapy products especially as you're spending 900 dollars for something like this some people may want that extra peace of mind with a two or three year warranty. Now there was a little bit of EMF in there, nothing concerning, uh, but if you are EMF sensitive, then that may be something to think about. And then also there's the price point of view. However, if you're looking at other products for $900, there are a lot of other options and I'll touch on some of them later in this video, but still that it is quite unique. There's no other product out there that's packing this much power into a small device like this. And then speaking of power, with power comes responsibility and even risk. This thing is putting out a ton of light. It can lead to burns. If you were to leave this on, say, your arm for a couple of minutes, you're potentially gonna do some damage. And definitely don't go into this thinking more is better and just push through it because you will do some damage. Okay then, so should you buy this? Well, honestly, if you are suffering from some deep tissue, deep joint, connective tissue issues, whether you've had, say, surgery or you've got a problematic knee or, I don't know, you've torn a tendon or something like that, 
then yeah, I definitely consider it just purely from that penetration point of view. If you're someone who just wants, I don't know, improvements with fine lines and wrinkles, you may not want to go with something like this. You may be better off suited getting a mask or a small panel. But if you really want that deep tissue benefit, then yes, the Iron Forge is something you should consider. Likewise, if you're an athlete or if you travel a lot, I actually think it serves a really good purpose here. If you're someone that has the epic home set up and you've got say four Biomax 900s like I do, or maybe you've even got access to like a, a red light therapy bed for instance, that's all great when you're at home, but when you're out and about, you're not gonna be packing your panels, right? So something like this could actually be a great addition in your suitcase or in your gym bag. Again, this is something that I'll be doing, using it when I travel, especially for travel sessions more than a week, and even having it in my gym as well. Before you do go out and buy this, what other options are there? Well, let's look at two different categories. First, we've got the size and power category, and then we'll look at similar products from a price point of view. Well, really from the power output point of view, you have to look at very expensive medical products such as the Thor laser tabletop setup which is designed for practitioners. Those cost $10,000, $15,000. So really it's probably not something you're gonna consider unless you've got a ton of money. This is more of a consumer product. Otherwise you could look at medical lasers. Again, really high powered. Some of them are even more powerful than this, but they often come at a big price point. Some of them require specialized training and there are a lot of potential downsides. Of course, with a laser like that, you're not getting the treatment area that you're getting with the Iron Forge. On the other side, you could get something smaller such as the Kineon Move Plus Pro that has some lasers and LEDs. Decent amount of power, still nothing like this. That is actually designed for joints as well. It's about half the price of one of these, but again, much smaller device, less power, some similarities, but still, this is quite unique given the power output, the size, and the wavelengths it's using, and also the price. Now, what about price? If you are gonna spend 900 to say $1,000, what are the other options? Well, of course you could get a panel. Most wall panels now around that 300 LED mark are gonna be above $1,000. So if you're happy to stretch your budget, you could consider one of them, but really they're quite different. Those panels are great for full body benefits, right? Yes, there are some out there that are putting out a ton of power. Check out the shopping database at lighttherapyinsiders.com for more than that. But they're more for full body benefits, full body systemic benefits. If you've got that sprained ankle, yes, you can use the panel, but something like this may actually work better. Well, it is gonna work better. I personally see the two supplementing each other. You have your panel for that full body session when you've got your 10 minutes or 15 minutes in the morning. Uh, maybe you're doing some breathing or some journaling or listen to a podcast, and then you use this for more of a targeted treatment or when you're traveling. Still though, $1,000 is a lot of money. So be sure to shop around and be sure to check out some of my other reviews. I have a full playlist up here of all of Red Light Therapy product reviews I've done. But if you don't wanna watch one of those reviews and you wanna learn more about this product, then be sure to go down to the show notes and be sure to check out my interview with the inventor of this product, Michael Shapiro. You'll highly enjoy that.